Hey everybody, Zach again at NewTutorial.com coming in and making a video for you today. I wanted to talk about liberty. And in particular, Galatians 5 verse 1, this is something that comes up quite a bit from people who have encountered folks uh, from the Christian perspective, the church perspective, who are seeing you doing a lot of this tour business and they just don't understand what is this whole thing you're doing because we're now free, we're, we now have liberty, we have freedom in Christ, we, have, we are under grace. And so this is something that comes up quite a bit. And I just want to go through that verse. Let's just start off by going through the verse, Galatians 5 verse 1, then I'm going to tell you a story. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. So this is Galatians 5, verse 1. This is the King James Version. But just for giggles, we're going to go to the New Living Translation, which is what a lot of modern-day Christians use, and just see what it says. Christ has truly set us free. Now make sure that you stay free and don't get tied up again in slavery to the law. Okay, now again, let's just go to the NIV next because that's something that a lot of uh, Christians use in today's modern church and read that. It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then and do not let yourselves be burdened again by the yoke of slavery. And just one more, let's just go to the ESV. It's another modern translation that a lot of, a lot of churches use. And it says, For freedom in Christ has set us free. Stand firm, therefore, and do not subject, submit again to the yoke of slavery. So, uh, between those translations, uh, I think we've covered most of the churches and what they use based on those translations. And you see a lot of mention of slavery, a lot of mentions of bondage or freedom, uh, some mentions of the law. And so, these are things that a lot of... Christians will use when they come to you seeing your walk and they suppose it's an error and they're look, giving you this verse and they're saying, hey, you know, you're going back to, to the law. It's slavery. It's bondage. Full stop. <clears throat> Let's just say, for example, that that's true. If what you're saying is true, then when the father brought his people out of Egypt bringing them out of bondage. It's very clear. I bring you out of bondage, out of slavery in Egypt, only to bring you to Mount Sinai and place you under a whole different version of bondage? Is that what happened? Did God bring his people out of slavery of Egypt, out of bondage in Egypt, just to bring them to a whole another different version of bondage? Or, are you misinterpreting what Paul is saying here? I'm just... Folks, I know I came from the Christian church. You're not going to come and try to rescue me and try to show me that I'm living in bondage by going back under Torah. Because I, I, I came out of Christianity. I see it for what it is. It's lawlessness. It says the Torah of the, of the Lord is perfect converting the soul. So it's not bondage. It doesn't say that the Torah of the Lord is bondage. No, he didn't bring his people out of bondage just to put them back into bondage. So what is Paul saying here? For Let's just go back to the King James. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty, the freedom, wherewith Christ has made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. So Paul is speaking, obviously, to someone who was in bondage, to some people who were in bondage, and he's saying, hey, don't go back to that. What's he talking about? Folks, I have said it time and time again on my channel. And that when Paul is talking about being made free from the law, he's talking about one of two things. Two things. One of two. Or sometimes both. He's saying the man's law, okay, because man's law is bondage, okay? God's law for the Sabbath is by basically five things to remember. Don't work. Don't make anybody else do any work. You know, it's easy. Rest. Don't do any work. And man's law for the Sabbath, the Jewish law for the Sabbath, there's like 1,300 laws for the Sabbath. Which one's easier to keep? God's law for the Sabbath or man's law for the Sabbath? You as an American are subject to over 4 million laws. They don't even know how many laws you as an American are subject to anymore because they stopped counting. It's impossible for them to count. But God's law, you know, roughly there are about 613 commandments. Which one's easier? You living under God's law, or you living under the law as an American? See, when Paul speaks of being free from the law, two things. He's either talking about man's law, okay, or being free from the punishment that God's law brings when you break it. 
See, what was nailed to the cross, my friends, was not the law. What was nailed to the cross and what gives you liberty is the punishment for breaking God's law. Because when you break God's law, meaning sin, when you sin, the punishment for sin is death. Who took your punishment that you deserve for breaking God's law? Our Messiah did. He took that punishment for you, making you free to walk out of that courtroom and be on your way. So when Paul, in, in the case here that Paul's talking about in Galatians 5 verse 1, is talking about being free again with the yoke of bondage. He's talking about man's law, that these people who he's speaking to were under the bondage of man's law. And it's very evident by Galatians 5 verse 2, Behold, I, Paul, say unto you that if ye be circumcised, Christ shall profit you nothing. He's talking about a group of Jews called the Circumcision, a political party within Judaism, within the people groups of that time, who said, for you to be saved, you must first and foremost be circumcised. And that's not what God's law says at all. Faith comes before the flesh. It's, this, it's the spirit that comes, the spirit of, of, of repentance, of obedience. It was... Abraham's faith that made him whole first, and then the circumcision, then the flesh followed. But see, man's law during Paul's time, the circumcision party was saying, hey, first things first, get circumcised. And Paul's saying, that's, that's going to profit you nothing. If the circumcision of the heart doesn't come first, because folks, the Old Testament speaks more about the circumcision of the heart than it does the flesh, look it up. Go do a research on circumcision and see which is mentioned more in the Old Testament. It's circumcision of the heart. See, to me, that was a huge awakening when I discovered that because I'm like, oh, this is what God cares about. It's a heart issue, not a flesh issue. If the heart is circumcised, the flesh will indeed follow. But the heart must come first because if you're just doing an outward, you know, showing of of your love for me and the heart's not in it, it doesn't count. So again, anytime Paul speaks of this liberty or circumcision or bondage or freedom from the law, he's talking about either man's law or the, the punishment the law brings. Those are the things you're free from. You're free from man's law. Go back to the words of Moses, the thing that Messiah always told you to do. Okay. And Understand that the punishment you deserve for breaking that law, when you repent and you turn back with a full heart, a circumcised heart, you're free from the punishment because that was taken away from you by someone who stood in your place. So the story I wanted to tell was that um, I went to do an interview uh, somewhere and they obviously I was there the day before and they knew I was coming back. And when I got back, they had this on this chalkboard this verse, Galatians 5. And I believe it was in the version of, I believe it, the New King James Version. And it says, Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty by which Christ has made us free, and do not be entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Um, I believe that was written on this little chalkboard they had. And I, I, I'm assuming it was for me. I mean, they knew I was coming. They knew I'd see it. And they understand that I'm Torah observant. And they're very much Christian, and they don't understand why I'm... They haven't never brought it up, but they don't understand why I would keep the law. Um, and so, <laughs> I just saw that, and I'm just like, okay, I get it, guys. You know, I didn't say anything. It was never brought up, but I was like, okay, I see it. Um, and it, it just boggles my mind, you know, sometimes. And, and I get it. I understand why people are... You know, they're free. They, they, they've been taught this message since the beginning of them ever being in church that we're free from the law and we have liberty. But the question is never asked, which woke me up. What is sin? What is sin? Whosoever commits sin transgresses also the law. For sin is transgression of the law. And folks, John right there is talking about the Torah. That's what sin is. When you disobey, when you're disobedient to God's law, his commandments, statutes, it's sin. That's what sin is. And see, when we repent, we turn back to God. We turn away from the ways of the world. We turn away from the ways of sin and turn back to him and his commandments and begin to be obedient like Abraham was. And therefore, we're saved by faith. It's our faith that saves us because we're not perfect. We're not going to be perfect at keeping that law. All we can do is try with a circumcised heart that desires to do our best. 
And our Father looks down and says, ah, I give you grace. Because I know you're not perfect. But you're trying. You're trying to be obedient. You're trying to hear my words. Okay? And the punishment that was deserved for breaking that law has now been forfeited from you because someone else came and took it, took your place. And so, I mean, I get it. I understand the whole, you know, message of the Christian church today and those who say that we're free, we have liberty in Christ. But they don't, don't understand what that means. They don't understand that Paul is speaking over and over again the law of man and the punishment that we deserve for breaking the law, God's law. You know, we're free from those things. We're free from man's law and we're free from the punishment we deserve because someone came and took it in our place. So um, Galatians 5 verse 1, it's something that comes up quite a bit. And uh, you, don't, you have to understand the whole circumcision party, the thing that's going on there, um, you know, in Paul's time. And, and what the believers in Galatia and, and other places are struggling with this Judaic teaching that if you want to be saved, the first thing you must do is be circumcised of the flesh and the Torah, the prophets, your Old Testament speaks more of circumcision of the heart. It was a heart issue, not a flesh issue. It's always, always been a heart issue. All right, guys, we're going to leave it at that. Go home, read your Bible. Thanks. Thanks.